you wouldn't need long windows. time buy seven long windows and get one free call 800-492-5664 welcome back you're looking at beautiful santiago cuba this morning the final stop for pope francis before coming here to the usa the pontiff leaves there just after noon rides about 4 p.m at andrews air force base and we'll be on the scene live coverage of that all of the pope's travels here in the united states as we say good morning america following that and here are some of the other big headlines we were following this morning wisconsin governor scott walker the first big republican candidate to drop out of the race for president he was a front runner before now he's calling on the gop to come together to stop donald trump and the FDA is reviewing the safety of a popular birth control implant called Assure. When women have complained about serious side effects, including bleeding, headaches, and depression. A lot of talk about that on social media. And many getting ready for the Pope's history-making visit, including comedians. <laughs> Jesse, oh, do you have more on that? That's right, guys. You know, and it's no joke. Big names like Bill Murray are trying to make Pope Francis laugh. So does his joke cut it? And will yours? That's right. We're going to tell you all about it coming up ahead in the speed feed. You're going to give it a shot? Uh, I am not going to give it. That's one I'm going to pass You're on. Gonna pass I'm going to give you the floor for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> right now, that is coming up, but we're going to begin with that ABC News exclusive. Kim Davis, the Kentucky clerk who refuses to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples, saying that would violate her Christian beliefs. She spent six days in jail for contempt of court, and the ACLU now claims she's interfering with marriages again. This morning, her first interview with our Paula Ferris. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, George. And I spent several hours with her at her Kentucky property. Kim Davis says her religious liberty and her conscience, they go hand in hand. And in her eyes, those licenses being issued right now without her name on them are not valid. She tells me that if it comes down to it, she is prepared to go back to jail. I have never once spouted a word of hate. I've not been hateful. I've had people yelling and screaming and cussing me. Kim Davis says she never expected to become a household name when she started denying marriage licenses at her county clerk office. I'm just a normal person that um, has been touched by the grace of God and his mercy. And uh, you know, I haven't always been a good person, Paula. Um, <laughs> When I uh, didn't live for God, I didn't live for him. And I was real good at living uh, for the devil. You've been married four times. Mm -hmm. You had children in an adulterous relationship. Mm -hmm. People are calling you a hypocrite, are you? No, I'm forgiven, washed clean. And so four and a half years ago when Davis found God, she says she could not separate church from state, believing that a marriage is only between a man and a woman. Davis, who was elected in November as a Democrat, refuses to obey the of the Supreme Court that sent her to jail for contempt. Is your boss God? Is your boss your constituents? Or is your boss the federal government? Well, my constituents elected me. The main authority that rules my life is, is the Lord. So godly authority trumps all authority in your mind? Yes. So why would you want to remain in this position? I'm good at my job. Mm -hmm. I have friends who are gay and lesbians. They know where I stand. And we don't agree on this issue. And we're okay because we respect each other. So you would deny your friends who are in relationships, you would deny them a marriage license as well? I did. I can't put my name on a license that doesn't represent what God ordained marriage to be. And there are thousands of others who feel the same way. She's received encouragement from all over the world, numerous handwritten notes, a handmade prayer shawl, and crosses. But the hate mail came too. Very vulgar. I've been called Hitler. I've been called a hypocrite. I've been called a homophobe. What probably hurts me the worst that my God does not love me or that my God is not happy with me, that I am a hypocrite 
of a Christian. Davis was released from jail after being behind bars for six days, greeting the public in an emotional rally, even getting the attention of presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee. Now she's back at work, she's still refusing to put her name on any marriage license deputies like Brian Mason to take over those duties. Well, now Brian's signing all of the marriage licenses. Your name is not on those licenses. In your mind, are they valid? They're not valid in God's eyes, for one. And, you know, I think the authority, I have given no authority to write a marriage license. They did not have permission. They did not have my authorization. One of the voters who finally received a marriage license said that he finally <laughs> felt human. That was a direct quote. He was in tears. People will question, why is your moral conscience, Kim, more important than someone else's happiness? I don't think dignity is guaranteed in the Constitution. I think dignity is something that you find within yourself. I feel really sad that um, someone could be so unhappy with themselves as a person that they did not feel dignified as a human being. They got a piece of paper. I, I mean, there's just so much more. That. And this is really just the beginning for many clerks across the country. I am told by Davis's counsel that clerks in over five states are also seeking exemptions like Kim Davis. They do not want their names on these gay, gay marriage licenses. And there have George. been new complaints and she sounds pretty defiant there. So she is prepared to go back to jail. She says she's prepared to, to go back to jail. She is digging her heels in. Okay, Paul, thanks very much. Fascinating stuff. You're going to have a lot more this morning on The View. Yep. I'm sure it'll be a lively discussion on The View. Mm -hmm. about it will this. be. All right, Paula. Now to an investigation into a huge explosion that leveled one Texas home and damaged several others. Two people are still in the hospital this morning, but somehow no one thankfully was killed. ABC's Ryan Owens has that story for us. Some residents of this North Texas neighborhood still unable to return home this morning, evacuated after a massive explosion. We'll send a full response to this location. We heard the explosion and felt it. The blast just after 8 o'clock Monday morning, leveling one home, damaging nine more. I just heard a boom. We went outside to look and there was things flying around. Three people are hurt. Two of them, including this woman, still in the hospital this morning. Nothing short of a miracle that nobody was killed. Investigators think a natural gas leak may be to blame. I would say it's the chief suspect cause. Yeah. Explosions like this a concern all across the country, with nearly two and a half million miles of ice bring natural gas to our homes. This New Jersey home wiped out back in February. Safety experts say there's not much you can do but rush out of a building if you smell natural gas. They do warn you not to turn on the lights and only call authorities once you're a safe distance away. For Good Morning America, Ryan Owens, ABC News, Dallas. Thanks to Ryan for that. And coming up here, Dr. Richard Besser standing by with an important GMA Investigates. It's about those online searches so many of us do for our symptoms and sicknesses. It turns out your personal information may be getting sold to drug companies. We'll have more on that just ahead. This is Mark Watney. Micro thought I was dead, but I'm still alive. Surprise. <laughs> I'm running out of supplies. I'm running.